there and he wanted to know what the rich man was doing there but the bible says he called out after the poor man and he said father Abraham send Lazarus send him now that he may dip his finger in some water or to cool my tongue because he was in torment on that third very day that third very day he was living in torment but he wanted a poor man to come and assist him. He wanted the poor man to come and help him. But in his lifetime, he rejected the poor man while he eat, while he drank, while he was having a good time. My God, he was feeling his face. He didn't care about the poor. Just like us today, some of us, we have it. We could share, but we ain't giving nobody nothing. We're selfish. We're keeping everything to ourselves. Ah, you see the brother, he hungry, the sister hungry, but you're full in your belly. You don't care about how the brother eat. You don't care about how the sister eat. But God wants us. Ah, hallelujah. To be careful how we live on planet Earth. Because today might be your last day. Like the rich man, he did not know that he was going to die. So I live sumptuously every day, forgetting the poor, being up self, well fine living, and forget that there is somebody close there to give something to eat. We're big now. We have it now. We can drive all the nicest vehicles. But one day we will die and leave it behind. I've seen many buy big cars and build big house, and there is no way around. They're dead and they're gone. Do you know your time to die? Do you know? Your time if that should shock you now what will you do? You can't do nothing. You can't do Scarborough Market. And I, I talked to a guy like today. We worked work together. And I went home. And the next morning, one of my co workers called me and he said, You are here, find me dead. I said, Find me dead? He said, Yeah. I said, well, me and Fanny, we you know, yesterday, we were talking and having a laughing. He said, yeah, Fanny did. He said, Fanny taking with a heart attack. And then they rushed into the hospital. Fanny did. You don't know. I don't know. And we play around with our lives as if we hold our lives in our hands. They could struck us at any moment. But if you die, if you should die, knowing that you serve God. Man, I, I, I will see you over there. But if you are serve God and you die in your sin, you are going to a Christless eternity. I know people who church go out, go to church. My God, they go to church and they feel like that's, I, I, I went to church today. But when they come from church, mash the corn. Oh, I'm, a, I'm an Adventist. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Baptist. But after all of that is what? Are you living a life to please God? The Bible gives 
us an example. The Bible, the Bible shows how to live for him. It's not that I am on God's side and you're on Satan's side. Is it I am? Is it I am? You're on God's side or you're on Satan's side? There is no in between. Is it a God or Satan? There is no double standard in the kingdom of God. This is why the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. It's what will take you down to hell. Sin. The wages or the payment for sin is death. You want to live your life? Live it. Drink your life out. Smoke it out. Sex it out. Do you want to do it? But when you're done, do not believe in your heart that you have no part with God. God is a holy God. And without holiness, no man shall see God. Is that you walking on the street and not a Lord? Or you are walking at all? If you're living for God, I say live for Him. Live holy. Live righteous. In spite of what I say, live for God. You're going to be living for God. And many going to be pointing fingers at you and saying, give me him, bring me boat. But you know, you're living for your Jesus. If you're living for Satan, live for Him. Enjoy this world and go to hell with Him. Or don't pretend that you're living for, for Jesus and you're living for the devil. When the night comes, you're hiding. You're hiding. On Sunday morning, go to church, lifting hands and praising God. And God watching and he's shaking his head. My God. It's no time for that. He's already serving Jesus now. Look around and see what is taking place in our world. Hallelujah. Right around us, we are seeing destruction. We are seeing wars. We are seeing fighting. We are seeing the crime rate. It's taking over. It's coming to our door. You don't know who will come to your door. You don't know what they will come with. They might come with a gun. I don't know. You don't know. That's why we need to prepare and give God a chance in our life and serve Him. For this purpose, what the Son of God manifested to destroy and take up our sins. You see, we were born in sin and we were shaped in iniquity and we ought not to stay that way. God sent His Son Jesus to die for us. The Bible says that He was wounded for our sins, He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of His peace was upon us and by His stripes we are healed. He went to the cross. I can see them taking Jesus to the cross upon Calvary. Hallelujah. With a cross on his back. They placed him on the cross. According to the Bible, they put a thorn around his head. I can see blood coming down ah, from his head. Dropping down to his breast. They throw nail out to his feet. I can see all the blood all running down. And it was for you. And it was for me that he took that for. The Bible says that hallelujah. He came down from the cross and they buried him in a tomb. And on the third day, I rise again. The Bible says, and at this very point, he said at the right hand of God, the Father, making intercession for you and I. I've come to tell you, give your heart to Jesus. Serve him. It is for you and it was for me that he died for. Give your heart to him. Let him know that you see us and you want to serve him. Time is running out on us. God is about to put in his judgment. Are you ready? Are you ready to take him?
came at the point. Are you ready to say yes to Jesus? Because you don't know when death how it struck you. You don't know when your time will come. Take it now before it is too late. Do you know your time to die? It's a conscious decision. As I said, we were born from a baby, from stage to stage, and we would have grown up into this world. Some of us don't even know that we would have been so old today. And you know what stage you're coming to? is death. We're 40. Now we're 50, now we're 60, we're 70, death. After those either, death coming, death, death, death. Some people died before that time, they didn't know. But you're still alive, and you still have a chance to make it right before God. Do you know your time? so many ways one man could die. You could die by a knife, you could die by a gun, you could die by accident, you could die just natural death would take us out. But do you know to serve God. 
It doesn't have anything to do with no religion thing, you know. You know. It's about a relationship with you and your God. You want to save him. Right where you are, I wouldn't call anybody up, but right where you are, I want you to, to just say this prayer after me. Say, Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you for sending him to the cross and to die for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, then you are on your way to glory. But you must continue. It's not just saying a prayer. And when you're going back out there, you're going to live in the same life. It's a repentant prayer where you took, you're going down the road, and you turn your back from down there and you decide that you're going to continue walking this pathway. That is when you repent and give your life to Jesus. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for your love and your mercy. I thank you today for your people. All who would have come to support. Hallelujah. In this funeral. I pray that you're going to touch. I pray that you're going to minister. I pray that, oh God, you're going to have your perfect way. I'm praying for if any that are sick here this day. Oh God, you're going to reach out and you're going to touch. You're going to heal. You're going to deliver. I pray, my God, your special anointing upon each and every one. Even as they leave this place, my God, they're going to live with the assurance that you are with them. Continue to have your way. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that you're going to keep them. You're going to strengthen them. You're going to encourage them. Cause your face to shine upon them. Each and every one this afternoon who are in this building. I pray, oh God, for your grace and your mercy upon them in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I come against every plan of the devil. For we know the devil come to steal, he come to kill, and he come to destroy. I pray against every plan and every purpose of the enemy today. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, you just have your way. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Thank you. And may God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So now we'll just have the prayer for the family. So family members, you could just come forward. First, we'll have the prayer for the family. And then we'll go right into the uh, viewing because we're looking at the time and the weather. Amen. Hallelujah. So I call on the elder in the house, Elder Victor. Bless the Lord. You want to say, we're going to pray for the immediate family, um, cousins, uncles, or nephews, nieces, and so on, because we know funerals and death times could bring some troubles. But uh, we want to pray that God will strengthen all those who are or, who are close or work close when you deceased, that God will give you the strength all over that going through whatever challenges you have to go through to reach this day. So we want to pray all those who are family members, you could, you could feel free to come forward. Let's come quickly. I'm sure all of us could testify that things, sometimes at the, at the, after the death of some family member, things fell apart. Hallelujah. But God is able. Father, just stretch your hands if you can this afternoon to those who are in the congregation with these wonderful people here. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your goodness. Thank you for your grace, O oh God. Thank you for your strength that's available. 
In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lift every family of the deceased man standing here right now. We, we lift every family member before you, O oh God. Whatever went, we come against, hallelujah, every bad memory right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, as they continue to live their life, their lives will be lived, O oh God, in peace, love, in harmony, with an understanding. There will be no, no, no hatred and bitterness and family wranglings and warrings. We come against the works of the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever is there that has been left behind, we pray, O oh God, that there would be any, there would not be any fighting and destruction for what has been left behind. As the preacher just said, all of us have to go. We don't know when the time is. But oh God, as they would come together as a family, let the strength of God be their portion. Let the wisdom of God, let the grace of God, the love of God, we pray that this occasion will be an occasion that will come to know you, to know the grace and the strength of God. If they have never come to know before, let them now come during this occasion. They will understand that, hey, you are able to touch God, strengthen, continue to bless, enlighten, and protect the innocent ones, the ones that, 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 that might not see certain things coming. Protect them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, embrace them. Continue to provide for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we just have the final viewing of the body. So we'll come up um, the middle aisle and then go down back on the side. Amen. Hallelujah. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. There's a land that is fair. And by faith we can see it afar.